everybody. Uh, Dr. Rick here dropping in. I hope everybody has had a good week up until this point. Um, once again, thanks to everybody for the love, um, the condolences, the well wishes, and everything in between that you guys have sent my way uh, concerning the loss of my mom. Um, right now, the day of final rest is set on the 21st uh, here in Houston. Um, as more information comes available, I'll pass it on. Uh, but I just want to take time to really say thank you um, in this uh, difficult time for me and my family. You guys, do me a favor and keep my youngest sister in your prayers. I'm not going to put her name out there because I'm real careful about uh, energy and a bunch of other stuff and not everybody has your best interest at heart. But uh, Just keep her lifted. She is struggling with this more than any of the rest of us. We all are dealing with it, but uh, she's having a hard time. So keep her lifted. Um, I've been talking for years about mental health and the importance of understanding uh, the impact of uh, mental illness in the black community, both male and female, and how black women are uh, disproportionately impacted by depression. Um, women are more likely to become depressed than men, and black women are the most likely among women to become depressed. And we need to understand and we need to address that. And um, suicidality among black men is on the rise. It is spiking at an astronomical rate. I've given you the numbers of 49% increase over the last six to seven years um, of black males between the ages of 14 and 24. And there's still a major issue all the way up until the age of 35. Uh, we have some alarming numbers that we are grappling with in that. And in, in, in my study of it, you know, it, it reveals to me that it, unlike women who commit suicide, and it's primarily uh, in alignment with uh, depression and a sense of and an inability to get away from it. So a sense of helplessness and hopelessness, it's different with men. Uh, what studies are revealing is that suicidality in men isn't so much uh, or predominantly psychological and spiritual. When we're talking spiritual, I don't want to mystify that word. I want to give it a sense of meaning. We're talking about energy created primarily through emotion and processing of information and awareness and sense of purpose and identity, all this stuff, but we directly link to emotions. So when you start to get into self-awareness, emotions, and self-value and worth, now you're in the area of the spiritual realm, in the area of purpose, in the area of role assignment. And one of the things that we find in these studies is that suicidality isn't so much about what men lack is as how hard and intensively men care. Uh, we tend to paint men as cheaters, uh, guys who don't care, uh, just in it to win it type. And the truth of the matter is, while it takes us a while to get there, we probably have a capacity to care more intensely than women. Women are more emotional, women are more discerning, women move with their discernment, and so therefore they are moved quickly with their emotions. But once a man cares, he cares, and he cares about specific things. He cares about uh, relationships, believe it or not. We're very keen, and if you, if you notice, um, we talk about the 50% divorce rate and how it's slightly higher for blacks. But what you will find is 80%. 80, I want to say 80 plus percent of these divorces are initiated by women. It takes a while to get a man there, but he'll stay there. Now, this isn't uh, observing and getting into all of this stuff about 
you know, cheating and all that. Those are things that need to be dealt with. How a person carries themselves in a relationship, how they treat someone in a relationship is immensely important. This isn't upholding any negative or erroneous behavior. This is talking about all above the board uh, behavior. So what happens is we care. We care intensely, specifically about our relationships, the value we bring to others, and our role assignments within the home and the community. When we feel that we are not adequately achieving these roles, we have a sense of frustration and shame. Now, we also live in a culture that racially and culturally socializes us into the idea, whether you know, you're black or white or whatever, but definitely in the black community, that aggression is a virtue. And that feeling any sense of emotion is a sign of weakness. The problem is when we get to a point to where we feel we aren't adequately meeting or living up to our roles. We, we, here we go. We want to what? Relationships, provision, and role specific uh, uh, situations. Provision is huge for us. They'll, they'll, they'll sit, they'll give you. Uh, all these narratives about how we are not naturally providers when actually all the scientific data, including data conducted by the CDC, says otherwise. Now, obviously, there are some jerks and some idiots and some people who aren't trying. We're all trying. Here's the thing, though. If provision is within my top three elements of concern and engagement that I feel at a level that impacts my my mental health, my state of mind, then when you look at the fact that there's an engineering of helplessness in that area for black men, joblessness is an engineered situation. It's not because black men don't want to work. That's a bullcrap narrative that's spit out to present a certain image and to create a certain level of disdain from black women about black men. Um, the deindustrialization of the inner city. Prime example. Uh, before the 1960s, mid 1960s, back black men could literally get jobs in plants, in warehouses, uh, in other industrial areas as mechanics, as welders, uh, and so forth, and literally provide for their families without their wives having to work. Um, despite a warning by Daniel Patrick Monahan not to subsidize the black family, uh, but to use the same money that they would actually subsidize the black family with to actually create jobs to give black men and to allow black men to actually take care of their family. The Johnson administration and those within the power did the exact opposite, simultaneously deindustrializing the inner city community, but they didn't stop there. They also pulled vocational training programs out of the public school system, wood shop, mecha auto mechanic shop, uh, electrical plumbing. All of these things came out. These are things that allow young black males to literally leave high school with a uh, wage earning skill that will allow them to start a family, build a family, support a family and uh, be traditional providers, something that's innately a part of them. Now what happens is, and this is why you've got this spike between the ages of 14 and 24. Uh, at, at the age of 14, we go through a process as young males where we are now in need of direct a direct understanding of who we are, where we're going, what we do, where we belong, uh, it, our relationship with God, what we're going to do for a living, how we're going to support this, what meaning do we have in the world, and when there's no clarity in that, when there's that's why I so that's why I talk about black men lead and the need to socialize young black males. Why? Because it gives a sense of identity, gives a sense of purpose, it gives them a sense of having value in a place where they're constantly being told they aren't valuable, they have no worth because what they can't get the bag. And if I can't get the bag, I can't provide. If I can't provide, I have no value. And it's, that message is on repeat. Well, what happens is because there's no emotional outlet, I can't say I'm hurt. I can't say I'm frustrated. I can't say I'm shamed. So what? 
I internalize it and it weighs down and there's a part of my process. Now, here's the thing. This place where I need to go to get this healing. When I say spiritual healing, I'm not talking about the superficial stuff that we deal with emotionally in church on Sunday. I'm talking about a deep reflection of who we are in a place of healing so that we can lose the powerlessness and become powerful. So black men, I want you to listen to me. Sisters, I want you to understand this so that you know how to work with a man when he's in a place of frustration and let's just say it, shame. Uh, because he feels he's not doing what he should be doing. Or he's not carrying the load that he feels he should be. And this is obviously men who have a sense of responsibility. This isn't dealing with the part of the population that is looking to get over or trying to figure out a way not to have to do anything. This is the predominance of black men you never hear about because they don't want this narrative out there. But what has to happen is you have to go into this place. Now, the beautiful thing about this is the thing that we are almost always um, labeled as a deficit for is actually a strength in this area. Uh, God didn't create us in a mistake. He made us a certain way for a reason. The problem is a lot of times we're trying to climb into the boxes that other people create for us. We're try they're trying to climb into boxes that other people create for us. I'm going to pull ahead and finish this. Uh, and so we're trying to act the way we think women want us to act. We're trying to act the way and, and communicate the way they tell us we should we should be. Let me let me let me be clear here. Men are predominantly right we're right brain dominant, meaning that we are good at spatial um uh, spatial uh, things. We are good at creativity. We are good at engaging vision. We see things from a creative, imaginative perspective. We're right brain. Now, the beauty about this thing is because it's imagery predominantly, it's imagery driven, it's spatial, it's, it's something you can look at and you can see, it doesn't require words. That's why women are better communicators. They are more left brain uh, oriented. And so everything is rational reason, uh, structural. Whereas in, that's why when you tell a woman I'm gonna do this, she needs a A, B, C, D, E, F, G on how you're gonna do it versus you seeing the image and the vision and saying this is what I'm gonna do and it drives you. Well, it's in the same space that you can go and engage your emotions. It's in the same space that you can go and you can sit down and you can become one and you can surrender to a higher power. And in surrendering to this higher power, this isn't a superficial act. This is truly understanding that you were designed by God to do something exceptional. And that though you are facing some difficult moments in your life, though you are facing uh, some adversity, though there are elements and components and machinations that others are creating to stifle your capacity to be what you were designed to be, that you you are in a position that you were placed in by something greater than anything you're facing. And in doing that, in surrendering to the power of God, you are by the very nature of understanding, claiming the power to change it. So in essence, what you're saying is because God created me and gave me this, he wouldn't give me this without being be there being a path to doing it despite what I'm seeing. So it's not just what I'm seeing, this helplessness that I feel, the shame that I feel is unwarranted because I have the capacity to change it. I need to trust the power of God to flow through me to do it. And in doing so, you open up the door of this powerful uh, experience of understanding that I can change it because the suicidality that is wreaking havoc in the black male community right now is based off of the hopelessness that's assigned to the shame of not being able to do what men do. And the truth of the matter is the very desire to do so puts you in the place you need to be. Having a desire to be the best man you can be for your family is the beginning of elevate, I mean, elevation, is the beginning of revelation, it's the beginning of true discovery. But you must understand something. You're going to have to engage your emotions. You're going to have to allow yourself to feel. You're going to need an outlet for that. You need other brothers you can talk to. You need uh, the ability to communicate with God in a way that you believe God not only hears but responds. I think a lot of time we get off into our prayer lives and it's all about telling God 
what's going on. God already knows God is omniscient. So uh, my prayer life is I talk to God, but I do 90% of my prayer is listening. It's quieting myself and putting myself before God in a way that I expose the vulnerabilities of who I am uh, in a way that I can't do with anyone else and saying, show me what to do with this. I'm listening to you because I want to be a representation of something greater. But it's extremely important that we understand what's happening because it starts at 14. And you're wondering why the children are, young black males are so violent. They're so disruptive. That's because at the age of 14, when they start to look for this identity and they can't find it because there's this identity crisis, because we haven't done a good job of developing a true nature and understanding of who we are as men. And we definitely haven't passed this on to our children. And we're dealing with 1.5 million mi uh, missing men, all these different dynamics that were engineered purposely engineered to why take away the leadership and the protection of the black community and we can sit up and we can empower women all day long why because until you have the protection and the leadership the empowerment is stifled in and of itself it can be a dynamic movement movement with women alone but if we can convince her that it can she'll take the she'll take the mantle and she'll leave him behind making herself more vulnerable this thing what I'm explaining to you, they know. They know the dynamic behind suicidality in men. Our our think our brain operates completely different than women. The things that drive our behavior drive us for different reasons than it drives women. We have a responsibility now to gain an understanding of this and use it for our benefit. This is one of the reasons that I've created. Uh, these programs. This is one of the reasons why I've delved deeper into this research and mental health that we're going to be carrying out over the next 18 months. This is why I push so heavily for Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage initiative and rep around services for young black males uh, starting at age four and going all the way to 30. Why? Because these ages, they are still vulnerable, four to 30, still vulnerable and still under assault. And we need to be more actively engaged in healing the process. I mean, healing uh, these issues and creating solutions versus complaining and, and holding our hands up in the air. Because again, that act of hopelessness only worsens the situation, especially if you're a man. The last thing you need to feel is hopeless. And so what I want to tell you, young brothers, is there's hope. What I want to tell you my, my, my older brothers is we need to come together and be a sense and a word of encouragement, a word of insight, a word of direction. And we need to strengthen one another. We need to stand with one another. That's too much individuality. That's too much showboating for the ones who do seem to have it together. We are so un accustomed to being in positions of strength and power that we would rather lord it over one another than to reach back and help those who are behind us. I'm challenging you to change the narrative. I'm challenging you to see your brother as a brother and to move differently. Sisters, we need your love. We need that healingness that comes from your spiritual womb. We need you to be able to speak the words of affirmation into our psyche because all we are seeing all day long is what we're not. We need to explore who we are. And you know, deep down inside of your innermost being, you know. So this is just something. I've put a link to an article that I wrote uh, some time ago, but I updated it over the last couple of days to include more information on this. So it's most recent update is today. And I want you to check that link out and you can look into uh, this, but we have a problem and it's impacting us. And yes, we do have a problem with suicide in our, bar, in our feet, women and our girls. And I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. Uh, but that's that look. If you believe in what we're doing, show love and support. Support the work we're doing. Give. Donate. I can't express that enough. This stuff costs. If you like what you're hearing, click the like button. Share it. Have conversations about it. Literally, pull up. I mean, have these conversations. These are the things we need to do. We're sitting so isolated that it, it, we're just easy pickings for the enemy. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. 
I had to pull over because I wanted to finish this before I got where I was going. Uh, once again, thank you guys. I appreciate you. You have an unbelievable remainder of your day.